In an earlier video, we mentioned the word power, and at that time we said we will talk about that later. Well, now is later. We're going to talk about the concept of power, and it has to do with type 1 and type 2 errors, so it naturally follows the last video. Statistical power is the ability to identify a relationship when there actually is one. You conduct a study because you think there's a relationship. Once you conduct that study, you want to make sure you have sufficient power to identify a relationship if one actually exists. Remember the type 1 and type 2 error slides we showed in the previous video. In the upper left-hand box is when you make a type 1 error, and we labeled that as an alpha error. The reason for that is the probability of making a type 1 error, rejecting a true null hypothesis, is exactly whatever you set alpha at, 0 0.05, 0 0.10, 0 0.01. That is your probability of making a type 1 error. Now, what is the probability of making a type 2 error? We call that beta, and the probability of making a type 2 error is much more complex to figure out. Let's provide some illustrations about power. Remember, power is the probability that a statistical test will reject a false null. So it's the power of finding a difference if a difference really does exist. And you conduct your study hoping to find a difference, generally. Here's the null hypothesis, and there's the critical value above or below which you would reject a null hypothesis. And here's the alternative hypothesis. So in this case, if you calculated the value to the extreme where the alternative hypothesis is, you would reject the null hypothesis because clearly there's something going on. Unfortunately, the distributions aren't always this disparate. For example, here's the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. And if the null hypothesis is true, the alternative hypothesis, as we've shown numerous times, would be coincident with the null hypothesis and you would not reject the null hypothesis. In this case, at alpha equal 0.05. But wait a second, there are other alternative distributions. In this case, notice the alternative is quite a bit of distance away from the null hypothesis. But what if this was the case? What if, in fact, the alternative hypothesis and the null hypothesis actually overlapped? Take a look at where that critical value is. In this case, the critical value, let's say 1.96, notice that the green represents that proportion of the alternative hypothesis that's above the critical value. The yellow represents that proportion of the alternative hypothesis that's below the critical value. So the green essentially represents 1 minus b or 1 minus beta the power, and the yellow would represent the beta, or the probability of making a type 2 error. Let's talk about the factors that impact power. The reliability of the dependent variable. The more reliable the dependent variable is, the less likely you are to make a type 2 error. The statistical model. Selecting the correct statistical model will increase your chances of finding a difference if one exists, thus increasing your power. The magnitude of the true effect or relationship. If there really is a difference and it's large, then you're more likely to find that difference. Error variance. As error variance decreases, power increases. Sample size. This is typically the one that most people think about when they consider power. The most often question asked with a research study is, how many subjects do I need? Well, the real question they're asking is, how many subjects do I need because I need to have power? And finally, the alpha level that you select. Unfortunately, the alpha level and the beta level, the chance of making a type 1 or a type 2 error, are inversely related. We will show that on the next slide. Remember, the green represents power, the yellow represents beta or a type 2 error. So here we have two distributions with alpha equal 0.05. We have the critical value indicated by the red arrow. Notice how much power you have and how little type 2 error you have. Now let's change alpha to 0.01. Oh, what happened? We moved the critical value out. For example, 
from 1.96 to 2.58, and what's happened to the power? Power has decreased, and beta has increased. Notice that you have less of a chance of making a type 1 error now, but you have more chance of making a type 2 error. And the last example we'll have is what if we change the alpha to 0 0.10? Notice what's happened? You have increased the probability of making a type 1 error, but you've decreased the probability of making a type 2 error, and that is to say you've increased the power. WISE, the Web Interface for Statistics Education, is a wonderful site. It has simulations for looking at different statistical issues. We're going to use the WISE interface to illustrate the effect of changes in different parameters and how that impacts power. You're encouraged after watching the simulation to go out and access the simulation given with the URL provided here and look at the effects of different changes on parameters to see what it does with regard to power and type 2 errors. Here we've landed on the Claremont Graduate University's WISE Project's power simulation. Let's change some variables and see what the impact is on power. Notice here the distribution on the left, the blue, is the null hypothesis. Here's a distribution in the red that represents the alternative hypothesis. Notice the dark red is that proportion of the alternative hypothesis that lies below the critical value on the null hypothesis at, in our case, 0.05. So the dark red would represent the probability of making a type 2 error. The lighter red represents the power associated with this test. Notice here that we have a mean for the null hypothesis of 100, the alternative hypothesis 115. The difference between those means is 15. The within cell variation is 15. Alpha is currently set at 0.05. N is 4. And given those characteristics, the probability of making a type 2 error is 0.361 and the power is 1 minus 0.361 or 0.639. Let's change some parameters and see what happens to power. Let's first, as illustrated previously, let's change the alpha level from 0.05 to 0.01. We do that, what happens to power? Notice power went down. Why? Because the critical value under the blue or null hypothesis was further out in the extreme, so it's more likely then to make a type 2 error. In fact, the probability of making a type 2 error in this example is 0.628 and power is 0.372. Let's reset our values to 0.05 for alpha. So we're back to where we were before. Now oftentimes people think about power and the first thing that comes to mind is sample size. Here our sample size is 4. Let's just change the sample size to 10. Let's increase our sample size to 10, and let's see what happens. Well, you should be thinking if you increase sample size, you'll increase power. And what happens? The power went up. Right? Notice the power went to 0.935 simply by increasing the sample size. Notice also what's happened to the shapes of the two distributions. Both of them have become more homogeneous. Let's reset our values again. Let's reset alpha. Let's leave n at 10, but let's change the impact of our treatment, the difference between the means. So instead of the difference being 115 to 100, let's change that to 100 and 120. We'll leave the within cell variance and everything else the same. What should happen? Now, the impact of the treatment, if you would, is greater. So what should happen to the power? It should become even greater. So let's What's happened? Our power has even gone up more. So it's, in theory, it's almost 100%. So as we modify the difference between the means, as we modify alpha, as we modify n, it impacts power. As a last illustration, let's reset our values. Now we're back to our original values. Watch. We can take the graphs on the left, the figures, and slide them back and forth. And notice as the difference between the means becomes greater, what happens to the power? Look at the power bar on the right. So all we're doing is we're leaving everything else the same. All we're changing is the difference between the means. So the more impactful your treatment is, the greater the power is going to be. But oftentimes you don't know what that impact will be. 
you'll need to make decisions based upon what the alpha level is, what the number of observations is, and what the lens cell variance is. You're encouraged to go to this site and play around so that you can learn how these different factors impact power and the probability of making a type 2 error.